Coconut Gaming. Hi there my friends, hope everyone's well. Um, so here we have my Kavosian Mutants team for Dreadball Extreme. The team's fully magnetised. Um, the only thing I've not magnetised is a set of wings because they, are, they would have to gouge into the, the skull to do that. So they'll get put on my blue tack, but everything else is fully magnetised. Um, the team's otherwise thought of as the Plague team. Um, so this is the Strikers. Now the bodies you see here are the, the team's bodies but in the actual pictures Mantic shows you it has them with actual jack parts but as these are the smallest bodies I've chosen them to be the striker bodies I'm making the assumption that Mantic even though it's their game and it's their sculpts got it wrong because I'm that way but these are the lighter bodies and the strikers are a lighter unit normally so it makes sense and it may just have been the people who gave them away to painting made a mistake so what you've got is various different parts. We have Judd one arms on the one you see at the front, an Asterian head on the next one coming round, then Veerman tail, and lastly a Judd one head. Those are the four different options you've got for your your striker teams, um, but you can put them on in various different combinations. Plus, you can change internal parts that you can't see. Doesn't make too much of a difference in the extreme game, but when we come to the actual main dread ball rules, it does. So I'll jump out our team and we'll keep talking. So the reason it makes a difference is that when you're playing these as a proper team in the main dread ball zero rules, um, dread ball O, the mutants you're not allowed to field two players with the identical body part configuration. So that's where it makes the difference. So you've got to be careful how you put together an extreme because there are no rules. Um, then obviously it doesn't make that much of a difference. Now, first one coming round here has got a Zazor head. Um, then we have one with a Zazor arm. Then a sphere tail. And lastly, the craw wings. The craw wings, if you look closely, you can just see the blue pack. Didn't want to gouge into those spines on the back. Um, to put a magnet in so I thought just give it a good varnish and if I am going to field it with the wings a bit of blue tack does the job. Now this is the heavier body that Mantic has pictured as the strikers so I'm using it as jacks um, and as I say I just think the paint studio they gave my way to paint it made a wee mistake or they weren't used to the bodies themselves if they painted it in house but I'm using them as jacks rather than strikers. If anybody else has got these teams, please put a comment below as to what you're doing with the bodies, but that's how I'm going about it. So I'll show you another set of jacks now. So this time round the legs are different. Instead of being the human slash mutant slash plague legs, we have Indige slash plague slash mutant legs. The tails on these ones are part of the sculpt so they're not interchangeable. Um, and the top loadout I've made the exact same as the previous guys I showed you. So we have the craw wings, then we have um, pure human, sorry, pure human. Then we have the Zazor head and the Zazor blade slash claw. Depending on which rule book you read, it says blade, claw and one, and it just says blade as the option and the other across your units. So I think that was a typo as well, just in case anybody wants to ask me that question, I've answered it already. Um, but I hope you like these ones too, and lastly, we've got one more set to go with with these guys, so we'll pop on over and show you them too. I lie, there'll be another set after this I need to show you. Um, so here we have the guards, the guards of the harder carapace armour up on the, the shoulder area and various different options can be put on these guys as well. So first round we have a guy with a crow arm, a teratorn arm I believe and a human head. Then the nameless with two teratorn arms which is your keeper. As you can see the soft glow on the inbuilt dread ball gloves. Shooting pastures, a nameless with a teratorn, then a grogan head and two teratorn arms. The reason I'm calling these all teratorn is 
The keeper option um, has a Terraton arm. These are the only other arms that are in the actual box, so I think Mantix made a slight sculpting mistake because Terraton actually have two fingers and a thumb, but all these sculpts have three and a thumb, so I think that's just a mistake in the sculpting process compared to how they've previously done the species, but as there was nothing else in the set and other people online are telling me the same, I have to make the assumption that that one there you see with the glowy inbuilt dread ball glove to the, to the flesh is a Terraton arm, and as the rest of the arms are the same style with or without the, the inbuilt bit, they all have to be Terraton arms. Um, so that's my thoughts on this. If MD knows anything different, I'd appreciate your comments down below. Um, appreciate your thoughts on my skin. Um, I went for something a bit more contrasting on the trousers and um, try and make the trousers all stand out from the flesh. I like it. Uh, I'm not so sure the missus like it. She says she likes it, but she loads it. Um, so you can tell what you think of that. I've got one other little section left to show you from these guys. So lastly we have our prones. If you've not played Dreadball, prones are when the players are knocked to the ground. Um, they weren't in the original set but they've since expanded it so all teams have access to prones. I like them, they're not my favourite prones in the entire sculpts that I've got to show you over the, the course of these videos when I get stuff painted. But I still like them. They sort of remind me of chest busters from Alien as well, the way the hands are up in the chest there. I see, oh no, something's going to come bursting out me. Hey ho, maybe something is going to come bursting out them because they're mutants and they've been put together in a lab or they're plague. It depends on the bit of fluff you want to use. Um, so, they're pretty cool, these sculpts. Um, useful in game terms because that way you're not going to be lying stuff all over the deck. Particularly when you've done something like me and magnetised all the options that are there. Um, because then you want the bits dropping off as you lie them face down on their side. Um, so please give me feedback. My big boy, give me some criticisms, tell me what I could do to improve them. That's how I learn. Um, I, I'm opening up myself as in all my videos. Please tell me if there's something you think I could have done better, something you don't like. Something you do like that you might do yourself you hadn't thought of. Um, so, take care my friends. All the best to you. Bye for now.